All right, folks, we got ourselves a carpet cleaner. Everybody that I knew that had one for me to borrow suddenly didn't have one for me to borrow. So I was putting it off, but I got a little cheapo one here just to get the smell of this mouse piss out of the car. Um, this does come with stuff for um, pet urine, so that should help. Um, but I'm going to start out. This isn't grease lightning like it looks. This is a gallon of water and... Tide. So I'm going to soak it down with water and Tide, suck all that out of it with the, the vac setting on this, and then redo it with the better stuff that comes with it for getting rid of pet urine. So um, that should help. Uh, other than that, we're waiting on an ignition, and we got to get a battery. And this thing might be running pretty soon to back herself outside and get herself a shower. So. Stay tuned. I'll uh, I'll have a little video of me vacuuming this out. All right. I wish we had a better way to videotape this, but I'm not as cool as some of the other cats that do this. So I've got this sucker loaded up with still the Tide. So we've got three quarters of Tide already in the carpet and a quart of Tide in here. And uh, let me see if I can spin this around. That might be better for you guys to see how nasty this is coming out. So let's see. This is getting a lot of gunk out of this carpet. We're gonna have to do this two, three times, but um, we'll uh, fast forward and I'll show you when I have at least this round of it done. Here's the results, folks. Blacker than my soul. And uh, that's only a part of the junk that came out of here. I put at least a gallon worth of fluid down, so I'm going to let this dry out a little bit um, then hit it again with the other stuff and hopefully start getting clearer water. But uh, this was astronomically different, astronomically different. So um, let me see what's next on our list here. we got the fuel out. i got some Berryman B12 to put in there, um, some lead additive. Uh, I'm not going to put fuel in yet, though, because we still have the ignition, which is our big problem. Um, I also still have to get in the trunk because I didn't have uh, starter sticks. I also didn't have door sticks, but the doors were unlocked and the trunk's not. So uh, we're going to teach ourselves how to pick a lock with a snap gun today that I just got. And if that doesn't work... I don't know what we're going to do. But anyways, let's let this interior dry out and uh, go from there. So, um, I think I showed it in one of the earlier videos, but when we got this car, um, there's a second whole steering column that came with it. This steering column has a much nicer horn ring on it with no pitting. So I was intending on taking them apart and swapping them. But, much to my dismay, Oldsmobile designed this car with a different horn assembly if you had a tilt and telescoping wheel. So, we're just going to stay with the uh, pitted one for now. Baby steps here. So, uh, I'm starting closest to the battery, and coincidentally, the closest thing to the battery is the horn relay. 
Uh, so unplug that, and when we run her right to power, the horn works. The relay might even work. We'll test that next. Means the controls on the steering wheel don't work. But we'll get to that when we get behind the dash. We're testing from the battery back. So, after that, we're going to make sure that this block here, there's a distribution block. Very hard to see because it's behind this big canister, but there's a distribution block down there I'm tied into. And it runs to the horn, and then back to the voltage regulator. All right, sticking with the horn. Um, you guys probably won't be able to hear this, but I hooked the meter up to this horn relay. It's kind of a pain to get to, and it's going to suck because we're going to have to replace it. But that horn relay is a... Um, low active, so you have to ground it. That's a safety feature on just about any sort of circuit like that. So you, you want your horn to work grounding. Anyways, I'm going to turn this around so you can hear it, but when you press the horn button, probably terrible to hear, but you get a high pitch whine. That means that is working. That means that relay is shot. Um, I jumped negative to that relay, confirming it is shot, which means... The first junction point right off of the battery is shot. Get one ordered, we'll go from there. All right, next step, voltmeter hooked to the coil. Let's see if we've got 12 volts on this coil. Once we turn these ignition, wow, I forgot how miserable those things are to kind of videotape, but anyways. Here, please. Yeah. Boom, 13.4, all right. Sorry, it's backwards. So, coil is getting power. The ignition is working. Still don't have the starter spinning. That's a good sign, that means our situation is not between the switch and the coil, which is difficult to get to, but if we're not getting spark, it's an issue between our coil, our cap, our rotors, our spark elators, and everything else. So, one step closer. All right, folks, well, it's getting late. Got one thing going. Look at that. Quarter windows, those things are just Gorgeous, look at that. Just need a little bit more juice, but we're out of beer. Um, we're out of daylight, we're out of nightlight. So that's gonna be all for right now. Tomorrow, we'll dive a little bit more into this electrical. My God, this car still stinks. Um, see if we can get that started to turn over. See if we can get her to fire. See if we can fix some little things. Horn seats. These switches on the seats are going to be tricky. So I think that's going to be a ways down the road. I really don't even want to play around with them. And I think I might have spare sets out of the Eldorado. So important things first. Let's get the starter cranking. Let's get the ignition working. Let's get some sparkles. And um, yeah. Talk to you tomorrow. So if any of you are curious, this is what we're working with here. Upstairs for the moment. Um, anyways, the front, this beautiful manual from 66, and most of its index was eaten away by mice. So that's great. Um, anyways, you get to the back here, and they almost, whew, almost ate to the back. And you need anything... Well, yeah, torque specs. Yeah, you're done for. But we've got electrical. And we've got uh, this circuit, which is pretty critical with your um, generator and your regulator, which is what we're troubleshooting. Your fuse block and some locations. So <sighs> I'm going to sit here for a while and dive into this a little bit further. We're over in this end here. You can see we already figured out our horn circuit. Um this part was giving us issues. Uh, we need to figure out why this sucker isn't getting power, why this sucker is tripping. So, 
Stay tuned. All right, folks. I'll keep you following along here. So um, we know we've got our battery here. We know we have power on this leg to our starter solenoid because the starter spins. We also know that we have 12 volts up here at our coil, which means this black with yellow center leg is good. So our issue is this purple leg. Purple leg comes down here to a safety backup switch. I didn't trace the rest of that to see where it goes. And then from there up to the ignition. It seems pretty simple. I don't know how the safety backup switch operates, but um, we're going to trace this out and see what's going on with this purple wire here. All right, back again. So, digging into this, we'll look down here and see this beautiful purple wire. This is what we were looking for, right? I thought that went to the antenna. It still might. Because it doesn't go to the starter because the starter has wires on it. And it definitely doesn't have spade terminals on it. So then you dig down here further and we've got a, uh, oop, a black and red wire. I mean, you guys in the video can see that, kind of. We've got a black and orange wire. I can't find a black and red wire on this schematic at all. So I think we're going to fall back and punt for the night. At least we figured the horn out. We figured one of the windows out. I know I'm going to need switches there. I've got to come up with a laundry list. We've got to get to test this voltage regulator. We know we have power to the solenoid. Um, but some of these wires aren't making sense. So it's oh dark 30 in the morning. My dinner has been entirely hydraulic. And it's time to go in. Get some snacks. Get some food. Get some sleep. And I would tell you we're going to hit this tomorrow, but in reality, it's going to be a couple days here. We'll come back to you, and hopefully, um, in the meantime, I can sit down with these pictures I took of the schematic in the car, figure out the next steps for what we got to test here, and uh, get this ignition working. I might just buy a voltage regulator just for shits and grins, but... Anywho, talk to you later. All right, folks, we're back here on the floor of the Tornado. And it hit me when I left the other day that the only thing between the ignition and the starter is a neutral safety switch. I was hoping that this thing just wasn't in gear or was in gear. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, I played around with that because on my Cadillac across the room, that's pretty sloppy. Um, but I'll show you down here this neutral safety switch. Um, and the purple leads on it. We're going to jump those out and see if that's the issue. That switch is only about $30 on Rock Auto. So if that's the case, we can get it replaced pretty easy. But we'll flip this around down here. Um, Oh, oh man, this is a pain to see. A real pain. Anyways, that plug that you're looking at is when we need to jump. So we're going to grab a little jumper here, trip that out, and then hopefully have our issue solved. Well, not solved because then we'll have to get a new switch, but closer. All right, it took me two tries to do this because. I tried using one of these little clippy doos, which work great sometimes, but they didn't work great for this. Um, so we have a big spider nest of Jerry Rig wire down there to jump it, and wow, that hood is massive and it shakes. Um, so we're in business. New neutral safety switch is what I'm really hoping it is. I mean, we know it's the neutral safety switch, but I, I'm hoping that it's not the steering column because they had the steering column replaced. It wasn't jumped out, which means it worked. It drove into that barn with a functioning neutral safety switch. So that's the most likely thing that is wrong with it. I don't know how this linkage is. It's probably cable driven. 
But if something's going to go wrong, it's probably not going to be, be a piece of stainless steel cable. It's probably going to be that switch. So one more part to order. So in my haste to order one of these, bought one off Rock Auto and it didn't look quite right. These terminals were in a different configuration. They weren't even facing the same way. And I looked 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 some more online and I can't find this neutral safety switch. But I did notice if you look in there, this thing is just coated with a ton of old, dry, disgusting grease. So we are going to soak this and we're going to clean it and we're going to put new dielectric grease on it. See if we can fix it. This is just a sweeper that moves and it barely moves, but it's not broken. So we'll clean it up and go from there. Okay, we're back in the house. Got this beauty cleaned up with some hops number nine. Probably could use brake clean, car clean. I've always been told don't use brake clean on plastic, especially plastic electronics. It'll eat away with it. Carb clean is fine, electric clean, but I was in the house. And hops number nine works wonders, but it also has the oil in it to keep it from um, cracking the plastic. So anyways, we got this fixed here. Um, I've got my meter on. Got some Dawn of the Dead on. Um, anyways, so you can tell here when you move this switch right where now we'd be in low mode, drive mode. Move it over and there is neutral. Then there's Reverse, which you don't want. And then there's park. So she works. I tested the park side too. Let me shut that off to get rid of that god awful sound. And we're good, which means this thing's fixed, which is great because I looked for hours and hours and hours and couldn't find anything. So the fact that we were able to get this working is phenomenal not only does it save time it saves money and it saves a ton of aggravation trying to find a unique part that might not be so easy to come by 60 years later all right back out to the garage all right coming at you live from inside the car again we got her in we got her dielectric greased up Let's see. Now there is an adjustment to this too, but let's see if it works. Now, let's try shifting her into reverse. Nothing. Far or neutral? Wait, might quite neutral. So neutral is a little, oh, there she is. Okay, that's good. Ah. A little bit past neutral. That's how my caddy is. But that is great news. Okay. On to the next thing, folks, which is getting her run. <laughs> 